So I found this on Stack Overflow. I was looking here and I found this question and I looked down through here and this is where this popped up. And I thought, hang on a minute, that looks a lot like some kind of obfuscation attempt. And I thought it was really interesting. And then I scrolled down and I found out that it was because this guy had already answered it and he had already pasted a whole uh, answer to it, which was pretty cool. So credit to this guy down here for doing that. Uh, over two years ago, great. But I thought this was really fascinating. I thought this would kind of be a nice introduction to some kind of general obfuscation attempts that people can do using JavaScript to stop you trying to get their data. Now, obviously, this one is near the top of the results for um, a certain search term in Google. And also, it's not really that great an attempt at doing it. So this is for educational purposes because this is, could be interesting. And if you're trying to prevent people from taking your data, then maybe you wouldn't want to do it this way. You'd want to do it a better way. So this is the website. This is a slightly different URL. So if we were to hover over here, you can see the email address is right here. It's actually a mail to link all in plain sight on the website. So we're not doing anything bad here. But when you go to it, you actually see that there's this script tag above it. And this is where this JavaScript is. And this is the obfuscation. Now, what this does is this actually creates this um, A tag here with all the information in it. So if you were to try and get this tag out without rendering the JavaScript, all you would get is this data back and nothing, which is what the person on Stack Overflow was doing. Now we don't wanna to have to render a load of pages to get this information. So what I thought I would do is I would just walk you through how you can sort of understand what this does and how you can de-obfuscate it to get this data out. So what this does, this code turns into this element here. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at the code in the code editor. So you can see it's creating a new array, which is like a dictionary in Python, which is called uh, L. And for each um, entry in it, you can see it's got these pieces of data. The thing that kind of gave it away to me right away was the fact that you can see here there's a um, opening of a tag, there's an A, there's a slash, and then there's a closing of a tag. And then we've got all these numbers with this line in front. If you go to the end, You'll see here, there's another tag, A, and then H, R, E, F. So that basically showed me straight away that this was creating an HTML tag, which was a link, which was probably going to have the data in it. So what this does is it creates this array with this data, and then it will say if the substring of it, so basically it's looking for this line, is, a, is there, it removes it, and then it will unescape it. So these numbers are an ASCII representation of a character, are the number of the ASCII representation. And you can see that if it doesn't find that, it just unescapes it anyway. So it's a fairly simple attempt. All they've done is turned it around, reversed it, and put a line in front of it. And then there's a number, which is the ASCII representation of that character. Now we can undo this nice and easily using Python. So let's get started on that. So let's just import in uh, we'll use request HTML from this. So let's do from requests HTML. Let's import HTML session. And then S is, is going to be our session. And now we can do R is equal to S.gets. And let's grab that URL. That one will do. And let's put that in there. So now if we print R.text, we should get exactly what you expect back or good fine if we were to search in this for the um, part where the email address is you're not going to find it because it doesn't exist because the JavaScript on this page hasn't run therefore it hasn't executed that script code which generates that element so let's find that element first so we're going to call this text and we'll do r.html.find because you want to find it and I'll show you how I pulled it out so if we go here, let's close that down. All I did was find this UL class of icon list and I'm indexing the second list item in, which is going to be a one. So UL dot icon list. Then we can do a space and li CSS selectors. We can index the first one, which is obviously zero is not zero would be the first one on the list. And then one would be the second on the list. And then we can do dot text. So if I print out the text of this, element now we should end up with this javascript code that we were just looking at there it is we can see it so what i'm going to do now so i'm going to copy all of this 
and we're going to use regex to pull the parts of the data out that we want. So I got this regex testing tool online. This isn't the one that I normally use. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, any will do. I'm going to paste the data in here. And here we can construct our regular expression that's going to pull out just the bits of data that we actually want. So now that I know that this actually forms the element that has the email address in, what I want is each and every item that they created in their array. And that is in between the single uh, quote marks there. So what we want to do is we know we want everything within the quote marks. So I'm going to do those. But that obviously doesn't find anything because that's not how regex works. But we want everything that's in between those single quotes. So we want to use the brackets. So that's going to search, that's going to tell us that we want to match everything within those. If we do a dot, that will represent a single character. So you notice that it's only pulling out the ones that are a single character, which isn't good enough because we have ones that are two, three, and four long, or at least three and four long. So instead of just putting more dots, which will match those, but not those ones, what we can do is we can put a star that's going to match all of them. Now you can see it's picking up a lot of information at the moment, and that's because it's finding them all here and it's matching them all. So we want to put in our question mark, which is going to make it lazy, which is going to match as few characters as possible. And that's how you can see it's starting to load up. We get them all out here. We actually do pick up this one as well. Um, but that's okay, we can just ignore that later on down the line. Not a big issue. If you had lots more outside this, maybe you'd want to do something different to match them, but this will work just fine for us here. So that is a really short and simple piece of regex. So just before we go back to our code and complete our regex, let's have a look at some of these numbers. We can see that the, the first one here is 109. So I know that this is the ASCII representation of a character that just has this line in front of it. So if we would go to the end, because we know that this is actually reverse. So there's our href equals mail two. you can see M-A-L-I-T-O, then our colon. So the first one is a 99. So this website here will actually tell you what they are. So if we find 99, we'll see that 99 is actually a lowercase c. And when you go here, the first one in the list of the mail is a lowercase c. And the next one, what do we have after 99? Is that 46? 46 is a dot. So there you go. That's, that's just sort of showing you how uh, I figured out how what that was. So now we have our piece of regex. Let's import that into our code, import re. And instead of printing this text, let's say our chars is equal to re.findall because we want to find everything then we're going to put an r and i'm going to use double quotes here because my regex has single quotes in it i want to use double quotes so they go around it all just like that and then we pass in the text here so this should let's print that out give us just those characters that we found which we showed you in the regex in a list in Python now, which means we can actually now turn them into what we want them to. So that's good. So let's run through and let's do a quick loop. So let's do for C in chars, let's print C. So we're gonna see that this is still backwards, but that's okay, we'll sort that out. So there's the beginning of our mail to, and this is where the, uh, the ASCII characters are here. Uh, and you'll notice that it's kind of it's twice because it's once in the mail to bit and then once in the actual text of the tag but we still have this line in front but we don't have it in front of these characters so what we need to do is we need to say that if there is a line in front we want to do something with that character instead so i'm going to say if c and i'm going to index the first character in c is equal to this straight down pipe we're going to print and we'll, we'll just do print C and we'll do the first character all the way to the end so else. And then we'll have our, our else here, just going to print it normally. So this should show us, we need double equals there. This should give us just the numbers now. There we go. So now we've got our numbers. We can actually change these back to characters nice and easily using Python. So we, now that we know that this is the actual number, we want to turn this into an integer so then we can turn it into a character. So because at the moment it's a string, we need to turn it into an int first. So let's put it in int. And now we want to use chr to turn it, another bracket, into 
back in from Unicode into the actual character is, i.e. the ASCII character that we want. So let's run this again. And there we go. We're starting to see it. There's our at sign. And there's our dot com. Uh, there's the end of it. AC, so I think that's the company. C dot, there we go. So what we want to do now is instead of like having it as a mess like that, let's create a new list that's just called our, our output list. And we will do, instead of printing it, we will add it to the list. So output dot append. And we will do the same thing for this, for where it doesn't have where it doesn't have it. And now what we want to do is print reversed output. So we are actually throwing up an error, and that's because we picked up that character that had just the pipe but nothing outside of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do try and here. And we'll have an accept for whatever that exception was. Uh, accept, I can't spell, accept. What was that exception? Where's my, um, let's pass it for now. It was a value error, great. So let's do accept value error as ER. And then let's just print our error. And we'll carry on. Okay, so we should get no error now. So we, there, there's our error, but we've carried on through it. That's our list object. So let's do our list reversed. So now we've got it in all the right order. You can just about see it there. There's the start of the tag, href equals. So all we want to do now is let's for uh, let's join it all together. So let's do. Um, Let's just make this a quick variable here and we can then do print joining it together and run. And there is the full tag, the full element that we were looking for on the page originally, which was obfuscated by JavaScript, which we have undone by using regex to find it pull out the parts of the array, we reverse the array, we turned the characters back from their uh, number, we removed that pipe, then got the number, then we turned it back into a character from Unicode and ASCII, and we've generated ourselves the actual uh, element that was being done by JavaScript, so we've undone it all. If you've enjoyed this video, you're probably gonna like this one as well, which is my preferred method for scraping data from a website.